Gibraltar is a, thank you Pete, my apologies, thank you Pete for organizing this. Um, I think these sorts of get-togethers of people in, interested in the same sector is very valuable. Um, and I'm grateful to him for putting this together. It's, I think, must be the fourth or fifth year, leaving COVID aside, that he's been doing this, both here and in London and other places. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful to him for that. I'm also grateful to all of the sponsors, whose names you can see behind me. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. So I'm grateful to them all for, for, for getting us here. Jib is an unusual place because the first group that I would like to talk about are actually the regulators. There aren't many jurisdictions that are proud of their regulators and have a good relationship with their regulators. And in fact, if you think about it, the only reason we're here today is because of the foresight and the innovation of our regulators. Because when we came to prepare the law, which is now the DLT legal framework uh, in 2015, 2016, and 2017, we sat around a table, private sector, regulators, government. And that's what led to the legislation that we published in October 2017 and then enacted on the 1st of January 2018. So I'm extremely grateful to William Gracia, who's here somewhere. I can't see him. Can you put your hand up? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Um, please take some time and have a chat with William. He's the head of the DLT team, does an incredible uh, job for us. And I'm extremely grateful to him uh, and the rest of his team at the Financial Services Commission for the work that they do. They are unusual uh, in the sense that they're prepared to sit down with you and talk to you about your problems. As a government, we've always invited, in whatever sector, insurance, wealth management, financial services, or DLT, private firms to engage with the regulator and talk about your problems. Because the sooner we understand the problems that you have, the more we can help and avoid the sorts of failures that we never want to see. And talking about failures, I come to the second point that I'd like to talk to you about. We've always focused in having quality firms come into Gibraltar, whatever area of financial services it is, whatever area of gaming it is. And I'm pleased to see that we also have here our gaming regulator, Andrew. Um, the more interaction there is between all of us, um, the more success we will have in understanding the quality that we require for firms to be licensed and supervised in Gibraltar. And when we started this process back in 2016 and 2017, it was always our determination to model the gaming model, where Gibraltar today has between 75 and 80 percent of the UK online gaming business. It's a huge chunk of business. It's written from here. And there are only 15 firms that do it. So by getting quality firms that we grow with, we have a successful niche in the market, a serious niche in the market. If you look at motor insurance, we have today 30% of the United Kingdom motor insurance market written in Gibraltar. One in every three cars in the UK has got a jib insurance policy in its glove compartment. It's extraordinary. Same again, how many firms? Very few. So we don't take the view that we want hundreds of blockchain firms in Gibraltar. We don't. We want a small number of good ones that will grow with us. Because the insurance firms that deliver to us 30% of the UK market today are the same firms that were delivering 19% and 20% five and six and seven years ago. They've grown and we've grown. And we do this together. And so when I tell you that today we've got 15 firms in the blockchain space licensed, I am extraordinarily happy with that number. Because we set the bar high we supervise it to that same standard, and we ensure that we get back to us a long-term sustainable business that the community will be able to enjoy and work with. And during this time, of course, we've also had the huge benefit of our own professionals, lawyers, accountants, uh, banks, intermediaries, getting to learn more and more about this industry with you. And that's what we've done in gambling, and that's what we've done in insurance, and that's what we very much hope to see happen in this sector. And I can tell you that it's already begun to happen. I can also tell you that we've got 15 full applications pending with William's team at the regulator. It's a very good number. We'll see how many of those make it through um, the process. We also have six 
who are now categorized and waiting to go into the full application, and we have three in the pre-application stage. So the track coming along is very, very positive. Um, our instruction in the legislation that we passed to have quality firms has clearly been understood. I'm very pleased to see that we don't have hundreds of firms seeking to be licensed by us, and that the work that we're doing is manageable. I think I also have to thank Gantt, <coughs> which is the association in Gibraltar that um, represents the industry and their work with us to help us introduce new philosophies and new policies is very, very welcome. They are now currently in the process of doing a paper for us on DeFi. Um, and that's probably the next stage of the evolution of our regulatory framework, how we deal with that. So I'm looking forward to continuing to engage with them <clears throat> in, in taking that forward in the coming weeks and months. And my thanks to them also for their support. I mean, when people ask me, what do I know about this and what do I know about that? The honest truth is I don't know very much, but I'm very fortunate to have people close to me that do. And each of those associations, whether it's Gantt, whether it's Jiffia, um, who I'll talk about in a minute, it is their expertise and resource that we draw on to enable us to make important policy decisions with the regulators. So I'm very, very grateful to Gantt, as I am to Jiffia. Jiffia are the fund uh, association. So all people and all groups in JIB working in the fund space are members of Jiffia. And they too have been very active in your space. Gibraltar's come within the top three crypto um, uh, funds jurisdictions in the latest, um, I think it's, my gosh, I think it's EY. Is it EY? Can somebody say yes? Is it EY? Well, you don't know. PwC. There you are. Oh, somebody. Somebody's listening. Um, <clears throat> in the latest PwC survey. So uh, it shows for the second year running that we're making some serious inroads uh, in that space and I'm, and I'm grateful to Jiffia for the extraordinary work they do in that. Um, the, ch the space is gonna continue to change. You've got MICA coming in the European Union, you've got the United Kingdom moving in terms of what, what they're doing or we're engaging with Treasury in the UK in the work they're currently doing on the central and the CBDCs. And the US is also moving. So I think there's a lot of change coming and we certainly want to continue to work with you um, in being engaged and understanding those changes and how we can participate and be involved in that. So you've got many more interesting people than me to listen to during the course of today. So I shall uh, welcome you all, wish you a fabulous couple of days together of, I hope, learning, exchanging ideas uh, and considering the wonderful framework that we set up for you here in Gibraltar and how that can be of best use to you. So thank you very much for your time and have a great couple of days.